Hey guys, Chip in Action, back with another video. Today we will be creating a new kiln that will not break under stress. I would like to give credit to Eddie2799 for the design for this furnace. Um, we based our furnace largely off of his design. I'll put a, a link in the video description. All right, we'll be making our kiln out of a 30-gallon drum that contained almond scent for perfume. And um, our local steel shop didn't exactly know what was inside of it. They just thought it was some chemical stuff. So they gave it to us for $5, which is a great deal. After you're done cutting and grinding, there should be a lot of iron filings left on the table of the ground. And what you could do is you could pick them up with a magnet, but then they'd be all over your magnet and really difficult to get off. So what I like to do is I like to get a plastic bag, turn it inside out, get the magnet in the bag, and then now you even have a little bag to hold all your filings in. You'll be left with a lot of little bits and you can just pick those up with a magnet in a bag, like I said earlier. I just cut off two little uh, metal bars so that I can span the gap between this angle iron and the main backbone pole. And once we weld these together, uh, this will serve the purpose as to lift the lid from just a foot pedal. When welding galvanized steel, make sure you grind up all the galvanization so you don't get those zinc oxide fumes. When we weld this lid to this backbone, we gotta make sure that it's perfectly aligned um, because if it's not, it'll lose its, a lot of its strength. Because as you can see right now, it wouldn't be aligned. And if we just welded it here, that would be kind of awkward for it to lift and all. I mean, it would still work, but it wouldn't be perfect. Right here is the seam that we use to help us orient the barrel. It's like where they welded it together. So for this little bottom wedge right here, um, we put this uh, some of the ceramic w wool in right here. Because when we're welding this one, the top one up here, um, it, a bit, bead of metal dripped down and got into the little flange in between this pipe and one of the uh, holders right here and that was oh my gosh that was really hard to get out and there's scratch marks all over it I'll put a photo up of the little bead as we were hammering it to get it out so when you're welding stuff and there's moving parts that you want to keep moving make sure they're covered Looks like putting that wool there was a good idea. Look at all that splatter that's landed on it. it could have gotten in the flange, but it just landed on that wool. Um, as you can tell in this furnace, there are a lot of pretty bad welds, and I want to attribute this to, first of all, me being a pretty bad welder. Second of all, there's a lot of welds where we're welding um, different gauges of steel together, which can make it easy to burn a hole out in a smaller one or just get bad welds altogether. And the third reason, um, I don't want to entirely base it off on this, don't want to blame the welder, but we have a pretty bad welder and it's not a great setup we've got going right now. 
See this tiny little bead of weld right there? I'm going to show you what it can do. So I just take that little ball. And I put it right in there. It's in the flange right there. Look at that. The entire lid system, it's blocked it. Look at that. <laughs> Gotta be careful with those little beads because they can just plug up your whole system. <laughs> I don't want to get some colon cleanser. <laughs> And the whole mechanism will work as I push down on this, or up, because it's upside down. It'll push up on this pipe, and then uh, lift the lid. So now we just got to weld this to the base, and bolt these together. Moment of truth, let's see if all the mechanics work. Look at that. That's exciting. So as you can see when we lift this lid, it kind of bows and flexes like this. Um, and when the concrete's in it, um, that might even make it tilt more like that just to begin with. So to solve this problem, we're going to take a um, steel bar and attach it to this from this angle iron to the sides on both sides, so it kind of is a brace. So we just added two brackets for support so the um, weight of the concrete will not tip the lid at all. And I excluded the welding and grinding just because of redundancy. But you can see how it works, how they um, support it yet. We're going to drill a hole in the center of the bucket to about a half an inch just in case there's a crucible failure so the um, molten metal can just drip to the bottom into a pan or something that we have below it. We just cut a cardboard tube so that the concrete will form around the outsides and there'll be a hole for the fire and the crucible to go in. And we also have a plug in the bottom with a small little dimple, I'll explain that in a minute, so the concrete doesn't come all the way up because we're going to do it in one pour. We cut this dowel here to where it sticks up from the bottom of the barrel three inches. This serves two purposes. It serves to define how much concrete will be on the bottom layer and so if there's a crucible failure, uh, the molten metal will just fall down this absence of concrete. We also drilled a hole in the side of the bucket and this little tube to accept the burner pipe. Just like that. The pipe being offset like that is actually quite important because when we put our crucible in um, it doesn't go straight into the side of the crucible and just burn a hole into it. It'll also get a swirling effect that'll get the heat around the entire furnace. Right here, this is ceramic wool. It has a um, heat tolerance about 2300 degrees. And we're gonna, line the, we're gonna line the furnace here with it. And this should bring it up to temperature a lot quicker. It's actually quite unpleasant to touch. It kinda feels like you're getting a bunch of little uh, kind of like when you touch a cactus with little tiny, tiny pricks. It's kind of what it feels like. We bought four bags of refractory cement. All right, so it's been about a couple hours since we poured it. And um, as you can see, it's not quite centered. That, that right there is a little bit wider than that is there, which isn't too big of an issue. Also considering that the pipe is coming in this way, so 
most of the heat will be directed at this wall. But another big problem that I've noticed in our rush to pour it, because it started setting a bit quicker than we expected, that was the, um, the pipe. That was a little tube that ensured that there would be a hole for it to drain. And right now it's at an angle. And the latest curing over here, this was kind of harder to do. Not really sure how this turned out. It's kind of leaning towards the, f um, the fence right here. So it is offset a little bit. We put a PVC pipe in the center for the, um, for like a vent hole. Not sure how we're gonna get that out. That'll be a fun challenge. We let the kiln dry overnight a little bit and in the inside it was actually quite warm because when the concrete dries it does like an exothermic reaction but just to test it um, I put a thermometer in there and at one point it was about 40 degrees Celsius which is around 100 degrees Fahrenheit and I also put some gallium in there and if you don't know gallium is a metal that melts at 85 degrees Fahrenheit so it'll melt in your hand can see it it's molten in there. There we go. The first metal we melted in the kiln was gallium. I think that's kind of neat. If I were to do this kiln again, I would put bolts in the lid so that the um, concrete stays in place because it, as it is right now, there's a, there's a small gap in between the, the top of the lid and the, and the uh, refractory cement. I would have also probably used um, alumina silica bricks for insulation because those are much lighter and I think they might actually insulate better than the refractory cement we're using does. For the burner, we have uh, propane, that'll be the fuel. We have a regulator right here, and that regulates the pressure because what's inside the tank is higher than what's going to be coming through this hose. Speaking of which, we have a 10-foot hose that'll be transporting the propane. And here's a valve, a 3-inch nipple, and then a the burner, which just disperses the gas so we can light it. And then, ignition source. The next video I upload will be me melting down all of the aluminum that we have. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe.